So uh, this is uh, Joran from Drenalog. We're at Superboots and we have new stuff. Let's take a look. So where are we headed first? Well, we're listening to Delay 1 right now. And that's our new BBD module. And it's making some lovely car plus strong plucky sounds. I can put on some damping. Reduce the feedback. Switch the feedback polarity. Going to high pass uh, feedback. So this is a completely new module for this year, right? Yeah, so uh, Delay 1, we've managed to uh, keep it a secret so far. Um, people have been uh, waiting for a Dranalog effect or delay or something in this area for a while. Um, and I thought about it for a long time. And what I came up with is the, well, it's the conclusion that if you want to do a delay purely analog, there's really only a few ways to do it. Uh, uh, tape or BBD, and the problem with BBDs is that they're they're known for being noisy, low, uh, high distortion, all that kind of stuff. Um, so I thought about making a really high-end BBD module. And the first thing I did is keep the delay times rather short. So we're talking one millisecond to fifty milliseconds, but at very low noise, very low distortion, and that's achieved by completely re-engineering the way the drive circuitry works. People have been driving BBDs for the same way in like 50 years or so. So here I really wanted to uh, explore new ways to do so and yeah, I managed to get about a tenfold increase in performance or decrease in noise and distortion. And you can really hear the difference. It sounds very crisp, very clear, but it still has some of that some of that special sauce that you get from, from BBDs. And in this little patch, we're just um, using the dedicated plug input for car plus strong synthesis. So what that does is it uh, applies a short noise burst to the input of the delay line. And then you add some feedback. There's an internal feedback loop. And that, uh, yeah, that gives you these plucky type of sounds, guitar type sounds, but also banjo-like with a high pass filter in the feedback loop. And it's, uh, it's, it's great fun and it's a nice alternative way to do analog synthesis to your classic subtractive patch or your additive or working with wave folders and that kind of stuff. And I, go, I suppose you can still use it in a subtractive way, run it into a filter and stuff like that. Yes, yeah, you can put it into a filter afterwards. But the nice thing about uh, Delay 1 is that you already have a filter built into the feedback loop. So that's a damping knob and you have a low pass setting or a high pass setting. And as I increase the damping, you can already hear it having that, that effect you might get from a filter or a low pass gate. High pass. You often don't need an external filter. So d does it have any uh, external feedback processing? Has it got a, a loop so that you can process externally? Or? That's a good question. There's no sent return inputs or outputs. And that has a technical reason. It's because there's a compander pair in there. And that's something you don't really notice as a user. But BBDs have very low dynamic range. 
So there's a very narrow uh, range in, in a signal, a signal level, signal amplitude, where you get the best performance out of them. So what the module does internally is uh, gain up or down the incoming signal. So it's always at the highest possible fidelity going through the BBD. And then it does the reverse on the outputs. So you have a compressor and an expander. The feedback loop is inside of this compander pair. So that means that once you start doing external processing on the feedback loop, you start messing with this balance. Right, okay. The upside of this approach is that you get a very, very nice balance between uh, the incoming signal and the resonance. So you don't get these sudden resonant screams you might get from other uh, analog or even digital delays where you don't have this dynamic processing going on. And we can, instead of having a plug inputs, I can take a, uh, a signal over here. Maybe something with a bit more harmonics. So we're almost at like comb, we're at like comb covering there, aren't we? Exactly, yeah. So, um, is this kind of available now, or what's the kind of time scale that you've got going for this one? We have, uh, for delay one, we're looking uh, at the end of the year, so uh, November 2022. Um, we also have two new ones, one is a bit newer than the other, left and right. Um, oh, for delay one, I would like to add that uh, you have voltage control over all the parameters, and the delay range can also be expanded by using the uh, high frequency input. So if you want to go beyond 50 milliseconds of delay time, you can do it at the expense of uh, fidelity. So the idea with delay one was to give you the high fidelity, um, but you can push beyond if you want to. And that's true for the entire series. Normally, if you use the modules directly in a in a direct way, in a simple way, then you get basically it's the sweet spots are like this, that's the idea. But you can always push them beyond and experiment with feedback patching and so on. Um, so for delay one, we're looking at the retail price of uh, 350 euros in, uh, in the EU, 350 dollars US, our uh, local currency, you'll have to ask your local dealer. Um, and that's coming in November, most Brilliant. likely. We also have Step 8, and that's uh, the new version of Step 8. We already showed that at uh, Superboot half a year ago. Um, now we found, um, following feedback from people, that there were still some improvements to be made in the circuits. It's an incredibly complex module. Um, so now we added some features, including um, concurrent 
step trigger advancing of the register as well as CV control. So you can use those at the same time now. And it will also automatically create sampling triggers. So if it's in sample and hold mode, it will sample the analog input signal uh, automatically when it changes the address according to the stage CV input. Um, but you can still override that. So you can still have address selection using CV and sampling using triggers. Brilliant. And that's the main differences. There are a few other small changes, but uh, those details can be found in the, in the user manual as well. And we hope to release that one in about two months. And to the right of Delay 1, we have another small um, addition to the series, that's Pivot 2. It's a 4 HP send and return router. And that's something that, for some reason, didn't exist yet in Eurorack, but you can think of it as uh, two send return pairs. So you can, for example, connect a filter and a wave folder in series. So you have an input signal going through the filter, then through the wave folder. With the pivot knob, you can make it go parallel between the two, or you can do the opposite. So it'll go to the wave folder first and then the filter, or filter first and the wave folder, or it goes through both of them and then mixes the results together. And you can explore anything in between as well, okay, all right. under voltage control. Excellent. For this one, we're looking at uh, 160 Euro, uh, euros, including VAT, 160 dollars US. Um, coming in September is the plan. And step eight, uh, let's also mention the price for step eight. That's uh, 350 euros, 350 dollars. Brilliant. Well, Joran, thank you very much for speaking to us. Thank you for uh, coming by and um, listening uh, to our little uh, to our fun little patch. <laughs> Cheers. Brilliant. Cheers.